So in this video, I am going to go over flashing and why I'm going to be using flashing to bring in the highlights of this print. In this video, I am going to walk you through uh, my thought process for printing this negative. Now, I am still in the process of printing this negative, um, and it's getting quite complex, to be honest. And I thought I would break this into maybe a series of videos um, going over some more advanced uh, contrast controls and not only uh, how to do them, but why you might want to do them. So one of the biggest problems when it comes to printing uh, negatives, like full scale negatives, uh, most of them in general, is if you get proper uh, contrast from the brightest brights to the deepest shadows, you might have good overall contrast, but a lot of times the local contrast can really suffer and get muddy. So the solution to this is to kind of break up the print and print for the local contrast instead of the overall contrast. And I kind of thought this print would be a good example. First of all, it is a problem, <laughs> problem negative. If you've watched the other videos that I made um, about shooting this, you know I kind of messed up the film and then ended up uh, with a very high contrast and negative, but one that's got a lot of very interesting attributes. So the first thing I did, I wanted to see how the highlights would print. So I printed this at the lowest contrast um, and just did an eight second print. And you can see I can get pretty good detail in the highlights all the way into the shadows. But again, what happens is the, the shadows are kind of muddy. You know, Nothing really has a lot of punch. So what I'm basically trying to do is use local contrast on the arch to print this how I want it and then print the clouds how I want it and at the same time the the sky I used a red filter so it has a lot of contrast from here to here so there's actually like three sections of the print that I'm ultimately trying to tweak independently to give it the the look and the feel that I'm after in this video series, um, using this print, I'm gonna go over some of the controls I used to print this, such as flashing, dodging and burning, uh, masking certain areas of the print, and split grade printing. And those are all techniques that can be used together. And like I said, I'm gonna do a series of videos kind of walking you through um, as I make a final print of this. So let's get on to print flashing. Now, a lot of people tend to kind of blow off print flashing is no longer valid or necessary um, due to variable contrast printing papers. And I do agree to some extent. Uh, variable contrast papers have made it very easy to split grade print and print down highlights with a low contrast filter. Now I will say that print flashing can come in really, really handy in a negative such as this. Um, and by this I mean it's very high contrast and again, this is the kind of the first test print, but it's not only very high contrast, but there's hard lines in here. So whenever you have hard lines next to really bright highlights, what flashing will allow you to do is bring it down to a more manageable level where you don't have to burn so long and you won't get those halos and stuff. So it, it essentially makes the job of burning down the highlights with the low contrast filter much easier and easier to go unnoticed. So in the case of this actual negative, it has both hard lines and it's just a problem negative in general. It The contrast is greater than I would want it to be. The clouds, um, you know, I can just burn them down, but my chances of putting a halo on them increase significantly. So here is just an example of two prints. Um, one, now there was no burning, dodging or burning done at all on these, but the prints for the highlights were both straight prints. One had a flash and one didn't. So you can see in the flashed print, it brought down the highlights quite a bit without even doing any um, additional burning. So this is the one that was not flashed. You can see that the clouds are really, really blown out. And then this is the one that was flashed. 
So one thing you will notice is the Unflash does have a tiny bit more contrast in the midtones. So it does definitely affect the midtones a little bit, but I can make up for this by just increasing this contrast and it becomes kind of a balance and a dance. But there's definitely an advantage to the highlights and I can bring back this contrast in here without too much trouble. So let me just kind of break down and explain um, flashing. What you're doing is exposing your paper before you print. This is pre-flashing. To just enough light to break the inertia so that any more light will cause an image. So there's a certain level of inertia that has to be overcome before anything will show up on the paper. So the best way I've had this um, explained to me so that it actually makes sense is, let's just say this is your film curve and these are your highlights and these are your, or this is your paper curve, I'm sorry. And these are your highlights and these are your shadows. And say this is the point where you start to see actual tone appear in the paper. And we'll say this is middle gray and then this is your blackest blacks. So it might take 10 units of light to get over that inertia and actually make tone on the paper. Then your middle tones, it might take 100 units of light um, through the negative to bring that down to middle gray. And then the darkest shadows may take a thousand units of light. So say your negative only prints uh, four units in the highlights because the neg negative is so dense it, dense it can only get four there. What you want to do is with a flash, you can add seven units of light across the whole thing. So that will turn this to 11 and it will only turn this to 107 units and it will only turn this to 1007 units. So you're only, so it's kind of like you're adding proportionally more um, light to the highlights than you are to the shadows and the midtones. It still does affect the midtones and the shadows to such a less, uh, to such a much lesser extent that it barely affects the contrast down here. So what you're doing is compressing the highlights while keeping the contrast good in the lower end. And that is very beneficial for a lot of negatives. A lot of times you're gonna to want to print with more contrast in the lower end to get that local contrast and then compress the highlights through flashing and maybe a combination of burning in with a lower contrast filter to bring that back down. That way you're not gonna have that muddy overall print even though the contrast might be correct from, from the brightest whites to the blacks, it might not have the local contrast anywhere in between there. And this will kind of help you tweak the curve per se and get those get the contrast out of the shadows and still maintaining the highlights. So what you want to do to flash or print is set up a small light. If you have a separate and larger, that works really well. Um, you can use small LEDs. I like to have a dedicated um, light set up and I do have a video where I showed how I actually made the print flasher that I'm currently using. You can do this under the enlarger, either with diffusion or if you take the negative out, you will have to stop down the lens. And I find it more cumbersome because you're usually changing the enlarger height up and down and you're gonna have to make test strips more often. The way I have it set up, I take notes on the paper that I'm using, the developer and length of development and temperature. Then I keep the, the, the light, the flashing light consistent at a level. I take notes on all of this. That way when I have to flash something or if I do have a problem negative or this is a good course of action for me, I don't have to stop and make a test strip to like figure it out. I can just go ahead and flash the paper for what I know is gonna work and proceed. Then you're gonna wanna make a test print, a test strip with, I use just one second in increments. So I usually go like one to 10, one to 15, um, you know, depending on the paper. And if, if you don't get any density, then you, gotta, then you gotta go longer. You gotta either make the light more intense or you gotta go longer in the exposure. Um, I usually try and get around like 10 second flash times. If it's a little shorter, I'm okay. If it's a little longer, I'm okay. But you wanna do one second increments to find where the inertia point is, where it's gonna start, the developer's gonna start putting density in the paper. Okay, when you find the time that leaves the paper completely white, 
versus where it starts having density. You want to go to the one where it's white, not where it's dense. And that's going to be kind of your flashing time. And you might even want to back off just a hair, but that's a good starting point for your flashing time. And you want to evaluate these test strips um, once they're developed, stopped, fixed, and completely dry. I squeegee them and use a hair dryer in here, and then I really evaluate them in the light very carefully. So let's say that the five second is the time that's gonna give you pure white, and then six seconds is gonna give you a little bit of density. Five seconds would be your flash time. However, you do want to either do one of two things. If you did one second exposures, one second, one second, one second. You have to make sure that when you flash the paper, you do the same thing. One second, one second, one second, one second. I just go a step further and I will take small pieces of photo paper, mark the back, and in this case, I would do four seconds, five seconds, and six seconds. Because when you do, when you set the timer for just five seconds and let it run, the exposure is different than when you do one second intervals. It can be off, it can be, it, it will be different. So you want to mark the back of the paper with four seconds, cover half that strip, just, just has to be a little tiny piece, and then expose it for four seconds in a row. Then do that with five seconds and six seconds. Then you wanna dry those and evaluate them and see where the density changes on which one and you wanna to go to the one before that. So I hope that made sense, um, but that's like the premise of flashing. So flashing prints, in my opinion, is still very, very valuable. Do not disregard this as an old method that won't work with variable contrast papers. It most definitely will. It might not be needed as often, but it will definitely get you out of some jams and it's a skill worth learning and it's not a difficult skill. So put this in your arsenal of tools to use in the darkroom and I think you'll find that it will help you along the way. So this is just the, the first in, this, in a, a little kind of mini series of me printing this negative. I've been really exploring and going through this negative and trying to come up with the best ways for me to do this, or at least my approach to it. And I want to share those ways with you. So just keep following along. And the next one, I think I do use split grade printing in this one. And I also do some masking and I might even do some inkjet masking. I'm kind of on the fence about that. So I would definitely love to have you um, along on this little printing journey of this image. And so hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications and we will catch you in the next one. Bye.